And my message is caught in a trap. Amen. But think about this for just a second. The trap was set. It told us in verse number 7 that all these different people gathered together. All these different ones from the from the presidents, so to speak, and the princes and all these other governors and counselors, all of them come together to set up a trap to catch somebody serving a God other than what they wanted to serve. Almost like we have today with ISIS. Amen? Wanting to set it up to where if you're not serving my God, that they're going to kill you. If you're not serving how they think you should do so, as Seth was talking, asking them when they walk into the restaurant, can they uh, re uh, read anything from the Koran? And when they said no, they would kill them. Almost like it wasn't. They were setting up a decree here in order for the king to sign that if anybody if anybody in that area, in that place of where they were, pray to anyone else in 30 days other than their king, they will be cast into the den of lions. Now, can you imagine that? Now, they knew Daniel. Amen. They knew Daniel. They knew Daniel served him all. So to me, it's like they're setting up a trap automatic. Sign for Daniel. Right. They're automatically saying, okay, we're going to just go get this one person because this is the one that's done. And this was established a royal stat statute and to make a firm decree that nobody at all should serve anybody. And then they bring it to the king and say, oh, king, sign this thing. Amen. Sign this decree. To make it right. To make it a law. To make it work. What they've written down they can put in action. Almost like sliding underneath him. To have him sign something. Almost like they do today. You know they talk about all the time about the president has to sign so many different things. Congress has to sign so many different things. And they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of things they have to sign. Don't you know they get tired of signing stuff? But they have all this stuff laid out before them. They brought this law and laid it out before the king and said, here, sign this thing. So the king signed the decree. The decree was that no one, whosoever, whosoever petitions any god or man in 30 days except for you, king, shall be cast into the lion's den. I don't care what law, decree, rule you put before our living God, it will stand. God will be able to overcome it. He'll be able to withdraw all things. He'll be able to erase it and cast it behind him. Our God can overcome anything that any law writes down to say we're going to do this, our God can overcome anything. Our God can withstand anything. Daniel went to worship. Amen. We read that. When Daniel heard this, he went to his house to worship. He went to his house to worship. Years ago, and I've mentioned this several times, we went to a church to, to sing. The group went to sing. And when we went in there, I was noticing there was a plaque on their wall. About so big hanging up on the wall. And on that plaque it said, if you were arrested for being a Christian, is there enough evidence to have you convicted? Amen. Now that's saying something. Because today it's kind of hard to find a Christian that'll stand for the rocks. Right. Amen. It's kind of hard to find somebody that'll take a stand for what they believe in. We was looking the other day and Steph said something about what was it, what percentage was it about all of these people that was made such a ruckus? It was 0.01%. 0 0.01%. 0 1%. 
of the population. Of the population of who? Transgenders. Of the transgenders. Zero point zero one percent of all the seven point two billion people in this world was taking a stand for transgender. Taking a stand that things could change how they want it to be. And look at the ruckus that they're causing. Right? Now, what would happen if the Christians today, and I know we got to be somewhere in the trillion, if you add us all together. Amen? If for seven, not tri seven trillion people, right? Seven billion people in the land. My mind's going blank here. Seven billion people in the land. There's got to be somewhere around one billion Christians, I would say. Have to be. Have to be. At least if you added us all together. And if we was to take a stand for something and say, this is what I won't change, don't you think we can make a move for something? Amen. Don't you think people would listen? Don't you think something would take place? Daniel went to worship. The call for the movement of God. That's what worship is, is to release the power of God to fall on. Worship is to release God to come down on us and to lay on us in such a way that we get so excited that we just don't know what to do. Worship is allowing God to just change things, right? Worship is allowing Him to take over in our lives. The call of our Lord to look at the things that's going on in our lives and see something's wrong. It's time for people today to start to do some worship. We're going to get here in just a second. There was a hunt. Remember that they told us here? There was a hunt. These men that wrote up the decree, be with me now, wrote it all up, had the king to sign it, said, let's assemble ourselves together and go see if we can't find this man named Dan. Right? Let's go see if we can't find this man named Daniel. Let's go see if we can't find out where he's at. Let's go see if we can, can, can see if he's praying to somebody. Now, I'm pretty sure they knew where his house was. I'm pretty sure that they did. And here is Daniel. After these men assembled themselves together, they set up a hunt knowing that Daniel would be praying. Daniel is in his house. Amen. With the windows open, turn toward Jerusalem. Praise God. Can you picture this? Praise in God. Amen. He knelt down on his knees three times a day to pray unto God. That was his culture. That is what he did. He knelt down three times a day to pray unto God. How many of us pray three times a day? Or three times a week? Or three times a month? Or three times a year? Amen? This man was on his knees praising God. He didn't care what that, what that law was. He didn't care what it said. He didn't care that they said you can't serve no other God but the God that, that the king put there. He didn't care about that. All he cared about was he was going to worship his living God. Amen. Amen. He was going to worship the one that made a difference. He was going to worship the one that took things over. He was going to worship the one that made a change. There are times in our lives that government laws will try to write decrees to stop us from praying or to our living God. To stop our praise. They wrote a law years back that they wanted to stop all airways of the preaching. Not on the radio, not on the television, anything. They could still preach in the churches, but it wasn't going to get out no farther than them four walls. It didn't pass because enough of us signed the bill that it was cast out. Amen. But they tried to do, you know what they're still trying? They're still trying today to stop us. They're still trying today to stop you from praying. But it's up to us to be willing to have the guts to get down on our knees and have the backbone to say, Father, bless this nation. Amen. Change them. 
deliver them, set them free, because God, it's a hell hole where we're living. Everything is trouble where we're living. Everything is problems where we're living, but we need to change to even set a trap for us to worship. Remember I told you that plaque on the wall. If you were arrested, it would not surprise me if one day, the way things are going, if we don't get somebody to represent the United States, to stand in that office and have enough guts to say, this is a Christian nation. Amen. This is a God-fearing nation. One man under God to stand by that. We're going to have problems. That's right. It would not surprise me one bit if the day doesn't come. I've said this many times that our Bibles that we take for granted, we no longer have. You don't know if they wouldn't come and confiscate our Word of God. We don't know that. This world's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. We don't know what might take place. It could happen. It very well could take place. It very well could happen. We don't know if it will or if it won't, but it could take place. Number four is this. Cast him into the den. Now, they then went to Daniel's house. Set up a little camp, so to speak, to see what's going to take place sitting outside his house to listen just to see if he's going to praise God. Just to see if he's going to lift up his hand and praise him. If he's going to lift up his hand or if he's going to praise King Darius. They circled around just to see and hear, hear this man. Starts praying. Hear this man. Starts praying. Hear this man starts praying. And he's praying. And he's praying three times a day. Can you see that? Getting down on his knees and just lifting his hands up and praising God. For the situation that he's been through, his day could have been terrible. His day could have been the roughest day ever. He's already heard that if he did that very thing, his day was really going to end up bad. Right? But you know what he did? He still got down on his knees, lifted his hand up, and praised God. I'm reminded of that little girl in that school shooting when they come to her and said, if you confess that you are a Christian, I'm going to shoot you right now and you're going to die. And that girl looked right up at him and said, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm a Christian. You know what? We have to be willing to have the strength today. They cast him into the den. They threw him into the lion's den. They threw him in their word. Nobody will survive. The command was given to cast him in the lion's den. Lock him up. Do away with him. Get rid of him. Verses 13 and 14 says, Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is the child of the captivity, he is praying to somebody beside you. What are we going to do? The king said, Well, the decree has been signed. We can't go against it. I can't rewrite it. I can't veto it. It's already been rubbed down. Cast him into the lion's den. Cast him into it. Throw him in there. This den was full. I want you to picture this for a second. I think about just going to, to the zoo 
And you see how they have the thing set up with the lions are out there. And they have their little den that they can go in and rest. Right? They have this little den where they can go in there and get out of the sun. They have this little den that they can go in there and just relax. I can see this. This den was of hungry animals. Hungry animals. How do I know that? Because I'm going to tell you that in just a minute. This den was full of some hungry animals. But you know what happened? They put him in the lion's den. He told him to roll the stone up. The king signed and said, it's all right. It's closed. It's done with. He's in there. But before he put him in there, he told Daniel one thing. The God that you were praying to shall deliver you. Amen. 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 Now here he's cast into this den. And the angels were around Daniel. I love it. They put a muzzle on all their mouths. I don't know how many they were. But they was all muzzled and they couldn't bite nobody. They made them so comfortable that Daniel could use them as a pillow to sleep on. If he got cold, I bet he could even snuggle up to them and get warm from their body temperature. Are you, are you picturing this? Amen. The angels of God that are around you today, whenever we go someplace and we feel like there, there's something going on in my life and I don't know what to do and I feel like I'm being attacked all over, I want you to understand something. There are angels that are all around you protecting you every single step of your day. And as Daniel was cast into this lion's den, he wasn't worried because he knew that his God is going to take care of this situation. Yes. He cast him in there. They closed the den up and the lions didn't even do anything. They didn't grind him. They didn't go and lick on him to taste him to see what he was going to feel like or taste like in just a little bit when they got a, 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 a midnight snack hunger. Amen. They used, he just snuggled right up to him. He could have been down, the, down. Things in his life could have been terrible, but instead of things being bad and he worried so much about it, he just started crazy. See, we can get ourselves caught up in the situation. We can get ourselves, if there's something bad going on in our lives, we can get ourselves caught up in that. That's right. We can get ourselves so frustrated and so worried and so down and so discouraged about what's going on in our lives that we'll stay in this little section and not want to come out. We'll stay discouraged. We'll stay down. We'll feel out like God ain't answering our prayers. We'll feel like everything is just working wrong for us. If we get in that down part. When you're in your lowest place, you know what you need to do? If you're at the lowest place in the ground, you can't, surely can't see no father. Why not look up? Amen. That's right. And see Jesus start to do some work That's for right. you. Look up and so you can see things changing in your life. He could have been down. He could have been singing, Precious Lord, take my hand. I'm fixing to die now. I'm in this lion's den. I'm not going to be able to go anywhere. But you know what I believe? I believe he was worshiping. I believe he had not had God and the Spirit of the Lord on him. I believe he was in such a such a excitement that I bet you them lions is probably looking at him like, wow. I bet them lions probably got saved. Amen? They probably got so much of God's power down there with them. And he's just praising the Lord. And as I said earlier, them angels are around him rejoicing. And he's just praising God and just worshiping the Lord. And I bet you instead of him singing, Precious Lord, take my hand. I bet you he was probably saying, One more river to cross. One more mountain to climb. 
one more valley that I've got to go through and leaving my troubles behind. Amen? Amen? I guarantee you, he was not down here saying, oh, what am I going to do? I'm very bad you. He was saying, in the morning, I'm going to come out of this hole. That's right. Amen? Amen? In the morning, the king's going to roll that stone away, and I'm coming right out of here. I guarantee you that, because I'm not going to stay here trapped in my troubles. Because one more battle with the devil, and I'm leaving my worries. I'm going to just walk away. I ain't going to worry about it no more. I'm not going to worry about it any longer. I'm going to overcome with Jesus Christ. Amen. Victory is ours, said the Lord. That's right. You might be in a lion's den right now. You might be trapped up right now and you can barely see light through the crack of the hole where the stone is rolled in front of your trouble. But there ain't no need in you wallowing in it like a, like a pig one in the mud. And your That's troubles right. start looking up and start rejoicing. That's right. Because when you start rejoicing, that's when that stone is going to roll the other direction. That's when that light is going to start shining brighter through that hole. That's when you want to start seeing Jesus looking at you saying, Come on, my friend. Let me help you right on out of there. You want to see things change like you have never seen change before. But you're going to have to be willing to let it change. That's right. you got to be willing to let it change. I've said this so many times. It's up to us to do it. I, you can come up here and I could ask you to come up here to the pulpit. And you can come right here and I can say, well, come on. And you can just stand here and not take a step. Guess where you at? You're still at the bottom. Yeah. You might be up here at the altar, but you're still at the bottom. you got to take a step up to get to the top. You can't allow your problems to keep holding you down there. I want you to think of something. Daniel didn't look at the problem he was facing. He was standing on the promise the Lord would bring him out of it. Yes, he was. The den you may find yourselves in, maybe because you made it yourself, it's been self made from serving a self made God, which you have created yourself. Your escape and your own escape is just like Daniel's serving the living God. That's right. Serving the living God. Serving the one that we know. You go to his tomb. I've said it a thousand times. Jesus ain't there. You go to wherever his grave is. They'll take you as a tour guide. And say this is where Jesus once lied. Amen. Amen. Where he once was at. This is where he used to be. But guess what? He's not there no more. That's right. You know why? Because... Your master, your king, your Jesus came out of the same den. Amen. He came out of a rough lion's den, so to speak. He came out of the devil's den. Right? Yeah, yeah. And in three days, when that stone was rolled away, he come walking right on out of there. Yes, he did. Glory be unto God. Amen. We have a God to serve like we've never served before. Verse number 22 tells us this. I want you to understand this. When you end the situation, remember this. My God has sent his angels and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have no hurt me for as much as before him innocence we found in him. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. He says... I'm innocent. I've done nothing wrong. You cast me into this lion's den and I come out with not even a scratch on me. That's right. I guarantee you he walked up to the king and said, he, he may have hugged his neck and said, that was the best night's sleep I've ever had. <laughs> Amen. That was the best night's sleep I've ever had. You gotta understand this. My God has sent his angels to protect us. Wherever 
same way he acts today, remember, my God has sent his angels to protect you. Your God that you serve, just as Daniel did, three times a day, has angels protecting him. When you pray, every time you pray, you have angels protecting you. He is the living God. The king made a new decree that all must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. You know why? The king's eyes was changed. Yes, they were. Woo! His eyes were changed, right? Yes. They were changed because he thought they would have no more Daniel. Just one man to be done with, and we won't worry about it. I told you the lions was hungry, and I told you I'd get to it, and then I'm going to close. Them lions were starving. Them angels that was around him kept them lions from eating. You know how I know this? Because the king had all of us gathered together that said Daniel was guilty. He had all of us gathered together and went and found out about him and cast him into the lion's den. Not only just them, he casted them, their children, and their wives into the den. And the Bible says, you keep reading it, the Bible says that before they hit the ground, they were broken bones and everything was scattered everywhere. I told you they were hungry, right? That's right. They just had to eat the right ones. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amen? My God is amazing. My God is so awesome. When you find yourself in a mess, open up. Open up your eyes and worship. And you shall be set free. Worshiping is powerful. It's powerful. Yes, it is. If you just get into the worship. Because when you're worshiping, it's just you and me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. As Brendan comes to the piano. Worshiping. It's just praising your God for all that you've been through, for all that's going on, for all that you've had troubles with. You've got to worship Him because He is the deliverer. I don't care what God, what the devil has told you. I don't care what lies he's placed in your life. I don't care what, where he said, you just have to stay here. This is what you're just used to being doing. So you just have to settle at the bottom. No, you don't. God will move you to higher grounds if you're willing to just worship him in praise. He will change every situation in your life. He'll change everything that's going on in your life if you would just allow Him in your worship. Is there one here right now that can lift your hand up? Because I know this message was for more than just myself. Anyone that can lift their hands up and say, Preacher, I've been in the lion's den. I feel like I'm in a lion's den right now. But after hearing this message, I know that the stone's been rolled away. I know that I've seen the power of my God. And I know that I'm coming out, stepping high, and shouting glory. Hallelujah. And everyone around me is just going to start shouting also. And I see those hands. I see those. Those. I see them, them all around. God bless you. God bless you. Praise Him in your worship. Daniel did. Even though things is terrible, he praised God. Praise God as we're in the place. Praise God. Just worship Him. Just worship Him. And thank Him. Thank Him for opening up that door. Thank Him for showing your way out. Thank you. Thank Him for allowing you to escape where you are right now. Thank Him for allowing all things to be different. After today, Everything's going to be different because your worship is going to be different. Give me praise. Give me praise. Give me praise. Give me praise. He's done something special in your life. Give me praise. Thank Him. Thank Him. Give me praise. We're in a place if there's one here that needs to come.
come to this altar. This altar is here for you. It's not for people to point fingers at. I always like to say this, if somebody wants to look at you and point fingers at you or comment because you're coming to the altar, they need to be here before you did. Amen? Amen.